In 1903, Madame Curie won the Nobel Prize for her pioneering work on radioactivity, which she mistakenly considered harmless to humans. We now know that her premature death from a rare blood disease was directly related to her exposure to radiation. Lead was a common ingredient in house paint and other household items, until scientists fully understood the deadly effects of lead poisoning. Until the 1980s, the federal government was reluctant to stand up to the powerful tobacco industry, even though millions had died of smoking-related diseases. Let's face it, sometimes we're slow to recognize danger when it's not painfully obvious. And the government is reluctant to take action even after the danger is exposed. Unfortunately, many people suffer and die before we eventually get around to dealing with many potential risks. And in spite of the fact that we have curtailed smoking, regulated harmful pesticides in agriculture, reduced the kind of chemicals we use in food and household products, decreased dangerous toxins that pollute our air, many diseases are on the rise, including Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and some forms of cancer. Why? Well, many scientists believe we're under assault by another form of common pollution we may have underestimated. Invisible, odorless, silent, and potentially deadly. This form of pollution is everywhere. You can't escape it. Electromagnetic frequencies, EMFs, produced by most electrical devices, appliances, and the high voltage power lines that surround us. Electromagnetic radiation, emitted by most wireless devices, and microwaves, the same energy frequencies we use to cook food in microwave ovens. But your microwave oven isn't the only source of pulsing microwave radiation that assaults you every second of every day. Television, telephone, and computer signals are transmitted by microwaves. Even some automatic garage door openers use microwaves to operate. Some environmentalists call this proliferation of EMFs electropollution, and one United States government agency warns that the levels Americans are exposed to every day without even being aware of it may be dangerous. The fact is, you, your loved ones, your children are exposed to 100 million times more EMFs, electromagnetic radiation, and microwaves than your grandparents. And now, one source of electropollution has become an increasingly integral part of our lives. Up close and personal, the cell phone. In 1993, the first lawsuit was filed against the cell phone industry by a man who claimed his wife's brain tumor was caused by cell phone use, a brain tumor shaped exactly like her cell phone antenna. The resulting publicity prompted the cell phone industry to fund a $25 million study to prove that cell phones were safe. They hired Dr. George Carlo, a highly respected public health scientist, to conduct the research. Dr. Carlo's study was thorough and conclusive, proving just the opposite of what the cell phone companies wanted. In fact, Carlo found a strong connection between cell phone use and brain tumors, neurological disease, and genetic damage. The scientific evidence is mounting daily. Brain cancer is up 25% since cell phones became popular. Every year, there are 183,000 more cases in the U.S. alone. And this may just be the beginning. Like smoking and lead poisoning, the damage from electropollution is cumulative and may take years, even decades, to reveal itself. But every exposure may adversely affect your health. Several renowned neurosurgeons believe radiation from cell phones and other mobile devices are directly related to the 21% increase in brain tumors in children. Children and teenagers are at greatest risk from electropollution damage because their skulls are thinner, they have more brain fluid, and their bodies are not fully developed. How much time does your child spend on the cell phone every day? And how will the constant barrage of electromagnetic radiation from cell phone use affect your child's health in five years, 10 years, 20 or more years? And if you think using a hands-free set reduces your risk of exposure to deadly radiation, think again. According to research commissioned by Britain's Consumer Association, 
conventional hands-free sets may actually increase electric field strengths inside a user's head by three and a half times. It appears that the headset wire acts as a concentrating aerial that attracts and channels radiation toward the head, not just from your cell phone, but from all sources of EMFs, electromagnetic radiation, and microwaves in the vicinity. In a recent study, neurosurgeons at Lund University in Sweden proved conclusively a link between radiation emitted from cell phones and brain damage. The researchers attached cell phones to the cages of rats and exposed them to intermittent electromagnetic radiation for only two hours, emulating typical cell phone use. Fifty days after that single two-hour exposure, the rat's brain showed significant blood vessel leakage, as well as areas of shrunken, damaged neurons. Researchers concluded that if human brains are similarly affected, the damage could produce significant long-term mental deficiencies. And in 2004, respected scientists in Sweden proved for the first time a definitive human link between cell phone use and benign brain tumors located exactly where the patients held their cell phones. Dr. Sheldon Levy, a respected physician and surgeon, has studied the effects of EMF radiation. I have to tell you, it's hard to ignore the data. We must consider the long-term risks of cell phone use. If indeed the effects are cumulative, then young people who are using cell phones at such an early stage in their development run at particularly high risk. But cell phones aren't the only culprit. Scientists have become increasingly concerned about the potential risks involved in exposure to low-level microwave radiation from microwave ovens. Keep in mind, like all forms of radiation, you may not see or feel the microwaves that escape your microwave oven. But don't underestimate the power of this insidious form of electropollution. Just think, it only takes about a minute to boil a cup of water in a microwave oven. Disconcerting when you consider the human brain is 90% water. Certain body organs are particularly sensitive to this thermal effect or heat generated by invisible microwaves. Your stomach, intestines and bladder are especially sensitive to thermal damage from high levels of microwaves, EMFs and electromagnetic radiation. Likewise, the testes are very sensitive to changes in temperature. Exposure to high levels of microwave energy can alter or kill sperm, producing temporary sterility. According to one study, men who kept their cell phones in their pockets experienced a 35% reduction in sperm count. And there is no escaping this invisible menace. Electropollution is not limited to cell phones and microwave ovens. Home computers, laptops, cordless phones, televisions, refrigerators, hair dryers, coffee makers, even our cars add to the daily accumulation of electropollution that may be pushing us closer to a national health crisis. Do you or your children use a laptop computer or a video game console? Do you use these devices on your lap? Consider this. Scientists are exploring the connection between EMFs from the electronic devices we use on our laps and the astounding 50% increase in testicular cancer over the past 20 years. One important study in the U.S. found a link between those who work in an environment with high EMF exposure and neurodegenerative disorders such as Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and Lou Gehrig's disease. But it's not just about diseases. Research shows that continual exposure to this onslaught of electropollution disrupts your natural energy levels, triggering an adrenal response which, in turn, increases stress responses. This constant stress contributes to your energy depletion and fatigue, lack of concentration, poor work performance, and difficulty getting a good night's sleep. Based on the research that I've reviewed, I'm convinced that the chronic exposure to electromagnetic frequencies plays some role in the dramatic increase in stress-related diseases and conditions that we've been seeing. If electropollution is so dangerous, why doesn't the government step in and do something about it? Government officials will tell you that the studies are inconclusive, that they're waiting for long-term human studies to prove beyond a doubt that cell phones and other commonly used appliances, which bombard us continually with radiation, are truly harmful. Can you afford to wait? 
Are you willing to put your health and the health of your loved ones on the line while the government spends years confirming what so many respected scientists already consider an international health crisis? You don't have to.